Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church in Poughkeepsie, New York, and our virtual worship series. This video is for Sunday, July 14th, 2024, which is the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Hope you had a good week. Thank you for tuning in this morning. I'm glad you're here. Now let's take a moment to frame our hearts and minds before God as we get ready to worship today. Okay, now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, from you come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and grant us the courage to proclaim your promise of grace to a world in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, we pray. Amen. Now, the gospel for today is from... Whoops, wrong page. Here we go. From the sixth chapter of Mark, beginning at the 14th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. King Herod heard of the disciples preaching, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it's Elijah. And others said, it's a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, because Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and a holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to John. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herod Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. So she went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? And her mother replied, You should ask for the head of John the baptizer. And immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. And immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. And he went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, <laughs> that gospel is, look, it's disgusting, okay? It's gross. It doesn't even seem to fit. It's not even about Jesus, per se. Well, I mean, maybe it is because um, Herod's actions here are kind of foreshadowing of what Pilate is going to do soon enough, as we know. So, yes, this gospel is a great theological device, right, tying everything together. But what does it have to do with us and with our lives? Because it's, it's, just, it's just awful. And yet, for some reason, Mark seems to need to tell it to us. And more so, the scholars who created the Revised Common Lectionary seem to think we need to hear it on a Sunday in the middle of the warm and fuzzy ordinary time of Pentecost, jolted into this crazy, horrible, disgusting text. So, but before we tackle the text itself, let's, um, let's review for a minute 
what Herod it is that we're talking about, because there was more than one Herod, right? The Herod, King Herod that we usually think of, um, is the obsessive, paranoid, pathological king who slaughtered the children of Bethlehem to try to get to Jesus when he was, what, two or three years old, right? Remember that? In fact, Herod was so crazy that he even killed most of his own children because he was afraid that they would kill him to get his throne. <laughs> well, as it turns out, there is one son, at least one son, that Herod did not kill. And this son was Herod Jr. And that's the guy that we read about just now in this gospel. So Herod Jr. now, Apple hasn't fallen too far from the tree, right? Herod Jr. has now married his brother's wife. Um, and John the baptizer is calling them out at every single level, saying how, how illegal it is and how wrong it is and all the things. And John's confrontations with Herod, and Herod likes to sit and listen to him, so John feels safe confronting him about these things. Well, now John's confrontations with King Herod Jr. have begun to affect the royal reputation, right? And that is why um, in the Gospel of Mark, there's a specific note that Herod Jr. has John arrested as a favor to Herodias, his new illegal wife. So she, you know, she didn't want to hear about this. So she calls for him to be arrested. And that's how it all starts. And now that John is downstairs in the dungeon and Herod Jr. is going down there all the time into the, you know, the man cave, I guess it is. I don't know, but he's down there listening to John the baptizer, protecting John the baptizer while he's in prison. Um, so now Herodias is, it's, the problem hasn't gone away. And, and she wants that problem gone in the worst way. And that's where today's gospel reading picks up. She has this opportunity and sends her daughter out, right, to impress Herod Jr. with a party dance, knowing full well that he's going to make some kind of grandiose statement to impress all the guests, because that's who he was. And her plan worked. Predictably, Herod makes that crazy claim. And so now, Herod Jr. finds himself caught between rock and a hard place of his own making. And the reason why it's... Because in those days, an oath was legally binding. If he made that oath in front of a crowd, in front of the leaders of Galilee and everything, right, he was now legally bound to give the girl, his illegal stepdaughter, whatever she wanted. So Herod now has no choice but to carry out this grotesque act. And... I don't know. It sounds so crazy. You, you, you can't make this stuff up, right? It just sounds too crazy. But, you know, underneath underneath all the gory detail is, is this important and yet basic process. And it is this. Look, here's a person who hates someone because he tells the truth about her. Denial, right? Now, here's a daughter who willingly helps her mom get revenge and manipulate her stepfather. There's power. And here's a man who cares so much about what others think of him that he's willing to literally risk another person's neck to save his own face. Pride. Denial. Power. Pride. That's what's going on in this gospel. Um... Now, Mark's gospel does note that Herod Jr. really regretted what he had done. He realized that he had become a pawn within his own family and within his own kingdom, and now it all came back to bite him. Um, and when, when you read that, it's, I almost start to feel a little, a little sorry for Herod Jr., right? I mean, should we cut Herod some slack? I can't believe I just said that. But here, look, maybe, maybe yes, maybe you should cut Herod some slack because this is about the process that's going on, right? The pride, the power, the denial, right? So because if you don't cut Herod Jr. a little bit of slack, 
um, then how will you cut yourself any slack for the times when you didn't stand up for your neighbor, your friend, or maybe even for Christ when you were under pressure? And how will you cut yourself some slack for all the times that you found yourself between a rock and a hard place because of your own fear of public shame or greed or anger or vengeance or lack of forgiveness or denial about your own issues, right? Like Herodias. And, and if you don't cut Herod Jr. some slack, how will you cut yourself some slack for any of those times when you caved to peer pressure like Herod or Pilate or Peter? We're all the disciples on Holy Week. How do you cut yourself slack for those times that you did those things just so you wouldn't look bad? But most of all, if you don't cut Herod Jr. some slack here, then you can't cut yourself any slack whenever you do the worst thing of all that Herod did, which is shift the blame. Herod grieved and regretted what he did, but he blamed the situation. But you see, it wasn't the oath. It wasn't Herodias. It wasn't his stepdaughter. It wasn't the party guests. It was Herod's own choice and his own command that got John killed. And it was Herod's own pride and fear and insecurity that led him to make the most ridiculous promise ever. Huh, that sounds familiar, like all the way back in the Garden of Eden. It wasn't the apple or the serpent or Adam or Eve, although they all blamed each other. No, it was each person's free choice based on greed and power and fear and jealousy and insecurity. Pride, power, denial. And by the way, did you ever wonder what might have happened if both Adam and Eve had just admitted to God what they did and come to God and taken responsibility for their actions and said, here's what happened, I'm sorry. Do you suppose that maybe God might have responded differently? Look, you know, today's gospel, it, it might be in, incredibly extreme, but all this hyperbole is really a wake-up call for us that in life, and in discipleship, it's not always easy. We are going to have those moments where it'll be easier to stay silent, to protect our reputation. There are going to be times when we will promise things that we just can't give. There will be moments when we speak without counting the cost. In our life of faith, faith we will face opposition to our commitment to a higher standard. People will try to cut our plumb line. We will face tough decisions about others. We'll face even tougher decisions about ourselves. We are called to be accountable and consistent in our faith, even if it costs us in the public arena. And if we're honest with ourselves, we're probably not doing a perfect job of that every day, all the time. Yes, this is tough stuff. And yet, it's not the end of this gospel, right? Because today's crazy story is sandwiched in between the amazing moment of sending out the disciples and the extreme opposite of what Herod did, which is the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 people on the hillside. Placed in that larger context, this moment makes it pretty clear that we are still called to at least try and to know that when we make our own Herodian mistakes, we can remember this. Um, Jesus cut slack for you. In fact, when he went up on the cross, he defended you. He stood up for you. He died for you. And he rose for you. No matter what the cost was, to himself. And that knowledge can help us um, to make different decisions, to say different things, to respond to our world in different ways. You see, 
because he did forgive you, you can forgive yourself. But more importantly, you can forgive each other. In fact, that's our call, to love each other the way Christ first loved us. Guided and bolstered by the Holy Spirit, we can face all the Herods in our lives and even the Herods in ourselves without fear. Because at the end of the day, only by grace can you truly save face. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Take some time to share that peace with the people sitting with you this morning, watching together. Um, maybe go outside, talk to a neighbor, talk to a friend, talk to a stranger. Um, make a call, send a text. Let somebody know that the peace of God is with them too. And in the meantime, gather together by that Holy Spirit. Let us now pray the way Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon each one of you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. And remember, you are the body of Christ raised up for the world. So go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me today. I'm glad you were with us. I hope you have a, a faith-filled and peaceful week. And I look forward to seeing you right here on video or right over there in church next Sunday. God bless you all.